That's okay. So we're starting this over. You'll see me on video, but you'll be able to hear Chris Pazula um, on the phone in just a moment. Chris, I'm just going to go ahead and start the show over again. That way it just be clean. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. You are now tuned in to Today with Pastor Jay on WNZF News Radio, where we discuss inspiring and informative news. And now here's your host, Pastor Jerilyn Denny. Happy New Year. Good morning. Wake up. Wake up. It's a wonderful, beautiful, and great day to be alive. And it is absolutely going to be a fantastic and a great year. Um, I'm going to start off by saying I do not want to receive any type of hate mail because of my show today. We're going to be talking about... Um, animal rights. Do animals have constitutional rights? What type of moral value do animals have versus humans? And my special guest is Chris Pazula. Chris is a lifelong animal owner and lover growing up on a small farm in Pennsylvania where they had all manner of farm critters and bred a few horses. She rode horses competitively through college and has an undergraduate degree in equine management as well as a business degree. And after college, she began a 20-year career with the federal government, with most of her time spent with the land management agencies, the USDA Forest Service, and the Bureau of Land Management. She has graduate work in natural resource policy, and later, at 51, she earned her law degree. Get this, her law degree came after a call on her life by God to get involved in the assault by animal rights groups against our God-given human and constitutional rights. She has been a citizen lobbyist since 2009 at the local and state level and provides input to propose animal legislation at the federal level. She is passionate about educating people about the significant differences between animal welfare and animal rights and the evil deception that is animal rights. So we're going to go right in. Chris, I want to thank you for being on the show. But first off, you have got to have received some type of hate mail or threats or something upon your life dealing with this. Because these some of these animal rights activists and animal rights lovers are, they're a little, you know, on the other side of strange. Yes, yes. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be able to um, to share with you and, and your listeners um about this issue uh, because I definitely am passionate about it. And, yes, this is an area where you definitely get a lot of hate, unfortunately. Um, And I've insulated myself a bit uh, just with some pseudonyms in terms of my social media and not just making it easy to find me and my animals. And uh, uh, But when I first started out in 2009 at the state legislature here in Nevada, um, I was a I was a target right out of the block. So it, mm. it was a big wake up call from that perspective just and I thought oh this is not good. So yes, unfortunately this is an area where you do get a, a lot of a lot of people that uh that want to hate on you um and call you all kinds of manner of things, animal abuser, animal hater, you name it. Um which is the furthest thing from the truth. So well, I mean obviously you are passionate about your animals, you love animals, but we have seen, I know I have seen people who worship, they, I mean, literally worship their cats, their dogs, and all these little critters and everything. In fact, the other day I was watching uh, Fantasy Island, season two of Fantasy Island. This is a new season. And a lady came mm-hmm. on because she loves her cat. I mean, she loves her cat. She wasn't, she wouldn't even go out to, to do anything because she loved her cat. She won, And her fantasy was she wanted to know if her cat knew how much she loved her. Kid you not? I'm kidding. Yeah, and so yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was it was very very interesting because I went. This lady was all about her cat, talking to her cat, and like the cat was a person. Right, right. And I I think that's where we get cats and animals are not people. They're not. Right, right. And this is what you know. As as Christians, this is this is. One of the deceptions of animal rights is they have every they've con, they've conscripted the animal welfare vernacular mm-hmm. and the language again language matters and and so much of what we're going through today as a society in the broader scheme of things um, I'm going to say that they practiced a lot of this on animal owners since 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote a series of articles 
called Animal Rights in the Deep State, and there's a lot of ties to to George Soros and all of that kind of dark money. Uh, and and when you dig into it, uh, the disruption to our food supply to to control our food supplies that's all animal related, and so. These groups, there's there's ties to all of that broader agenda to control us, and they've been able to to make the whole issue of animals so emotional that people just knee jerk reactions to things, and they don't even think. Which again is part of what they try to do. They try to control everybody by their emotions, and unfortunately, this is one area where they've been hugely successful. Well, when you talk about removing meat from, I'm seeing there's a new wave of removing meats from our diets. Yes. Yeah, just saying no. Yeah. Um, all animals, you know, regardless, leave the cows yes. alone. Of course, you know, we know there are certain religions that even worship cows. But it's just right. it's just strange to me. How far how far has it gotten? I mean, and it just seemed like it's over the past ten years or so has been a huge leap, especially over the past um couple that yes. I've been seeing it. Yes. There has been a huge leap, and that's, again, because I think this is one of the most dangerous issues with regard to the erosion of our human rights and our constitutional rights out there, because it is masked as something that it's not. And, you know, the Bible teaches us that, you know, Satan comes wrapped in shiny little packages, Mm -hmm. you know, and something that looks good and warm and fuzzy. And, of course, sad puppy and kitten eyes look warm and fuzzy. Um, now, like, I, again, you're saying we don't want to get any hate. Now, I, I love animals. I, mm-hmm. I have lived my life with animals. I respect, I do dog sports. My dogs are my partners in that activity. Um, I am a dog trainer. I study behavior. But God doesn't teach us that animals have the same moral value. In fact, they're not moral beings. They are, they don't have a soul. They, I, I, I agree they may have a spirit, for sure. There is mm-hmm. a, a spiritual um, you know, embodiment of them, but they don't have a soul. They are not a moral being. They cannot make decisions based on what is right and wrong. They can't reason. They will never form their own government. Here's the, here's the. That's the true. They will not form right. their own. Ga- well, we say that we say they won't form their whole government, but you know, there's a, a whole completely different movement with the furries, people identifying as cats. So there's that. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and I mean, yeah. but but if you're gonna if you're going to create it, animal equality, you know, animals are equal, right? They're equal to human. This is what they're, you know, they try to to do. You know, animal animal rights equality to humans. They're mm-hmm. trying. There's a there's been a big push legally to give animals personhood under the law, mm. right? So that they can be then victims and again language matters and all language this does matter so but you're talking you're, about a cat being um, practically just equal to a human have rights um i've said years ago there's going to come a time when people are going to marry their pet and i've been seeing some of that kind of right. stuff happening right well these groups have pushed for legislation there are several states now that have animal advocates in the courts. Mm. so if somebody gets charged and again here we go with you know how much more rights, are, you know, where are we as, as a society with our priorities with regard to the the punishments for animal abuse versus child abuse, right? Mm-hmm. Or the advocacy that children have in the courts versus what a dog has. I mean, these groups have pushed and are pushing the limits to try to create legal personhood. There's a group called the Non-Human Rights Project. They're a pretty scary bunch. Non-Human um, Rights Project? The Non-Human Rights Project, and they're illegal. They're out of Lewis and Clark Law School out of Oregon, and they've been filing all kinds of cases based on habeas corpus. So, mm-hmm. uh, the, you know, the zoo has their, their uh, elephant, you know, <laughs> unjustly confined, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's their, they, they haven't been successful yet with the whole thing. But, but here's, the, again, the whole thing with animals. Language right? matters. If you're going to create, quote-unquote, equality with animals— they're never going to rise to our level. They're never going to be able to reason. They're never going to be able to make decisions based on, you know, a moral, a moral code. They act by instinct. They act by training. So in order to create, quote, unquote, equality, what's going to happen? Our rights have to come down to meet them. Mm-hmm. They can't come to meet us. So it is, it is just inherently an erosion of our human rights. And what these groups have done 
legislatively in the last 10, 15 years, since 2009 really was the biggest, when it started the biggest push, was they have been creating laws, passing laws, again, based on emotion that attack our due process. They want to be able to charge you with animal rights and take your animals before you're even found guilty. Um, They want to be able to just come in and take your animals without even charging you. And just, because you know, an they feel as though somebody's... you're not treating your animal like a human or not, they don't have equal yeah. rights. You're not treating them the way, yeah, you're not treating them however they define. That's the other, the other big danger here is that, again, just like we're in the, again, in the broader society, what did we see? We saw the, the definition of vaccine change. We've seen these definitions change. Well, they changed, they changed the, de- you know, they can change and continue to change the definition of abuse. What is abuse, mm. right? Um, and and they have, you know, tried to make law by that more and more and more restrictively in terms of what is abuse. There are several laws out there that that now try or they're trying to pass where the sale of an animal is abuse because they, in their mind, you know, they're they're That's slaves. slavery. Oh, you know, wow. So well, we've got to take a break, Chris. Exactly. We're going to come back and talk about that. We've got to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. You are listening to Today with Pastor. Okay. Chris, um, if you were to give your t- yourself yep. a title, what would it be? You are a human rights activist. What? Um, oh, geez. I know. I don't even know. Um, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, I think we're the true animal advocates, right? Okay. I mean, we, we're okay. The animal owners that, right. and experts that really do respect our animals for what they are. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to come back in from the break. Mark, you've got my who let the dogs out. But hu- yeah, human rights, yeah, human rights advocate. Yeah. You know, from well, this perspective, that's probably. Okay. All right, let me know. Welcome back to Today with Pastor Jay. And everyone's trying to let the dogs out. And my special guest is Chris Pazula. And I say that because (laughs) right before the break, we was talking about zoos and all different types of things. And there's some legislation going around if you own an animal, if you try to sell an animal. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And everyone's trying to let the dogs out. I was speaking with my my daughter, my youngest child, 18, and she she has a cat um, at her dad's house. And they were, and I'm allergic to cats. And she was telling me the differences between dogs and cats. And then dogs go... Um, this person feeds me, this person shelters me, he must be God. And then cats go, <laughs> this person feeds me, he shelters me, I must be God. <laughs> so <Yep>. I don't, <laughs> yeah. the difference between dogs and cats. But now here we are, it's as though people are worshiping creation instead of the creator. They're equaling animal rights to human rights, and it's not the same thing. I mean, what type of constitutional rights right. do an animal have? Well, they don't have any. I mean, they shouldn't have any. Mm -hmm. Again, with regard to, I mean, they're pushing to get them. They're pushing, I mean, actually in Florida. Mm. Don't listen. Don't talk about my state. Your whole, your, (laughs) (laughs) go ahead. What's happening in Florida? uh, Yes, they, well, this happened a number of years ago Mm -hmm. where they put into your constitution that pigs have the right to have a certain amount of space. Oh, wow. And so they, oh, yeah. Yeah, and then you know the the uh, the big push to end the greyhound racing, right? Was mm-hmm. I don't remember whether that was a constitutional push that that might have started out the way. I don't know if it actually ended up that way, but but they are trying to get this stuff enshrined in the constitutions. Now we know we're Christians. We know that God, you know, design mm-hmm. is that man is has got dominion and, and these groups hate that word because that's true we do all, have dominion again mm-hmm. you're gonna make them a slave you're gonna beat them and you know no we we understand and, and god's design is that dominion means you know res, responsible stewardship but we are given you know all of the resources of this earth to use for our benefit and that means to eat them to use them as clothing to you know um to, to have them as pets and and uh, have them enhance our life. 
So, well, how about animal testing, though? So that's an area where, again, um, you know, that's international law as well as national law from the standpoint that, again, things are to, the law is that things are supposed to be tested on animals prior to humans. With Again, there was a recognition that, and that's to be done in a humane way. And I actually have a lot of friends and, and people that I know within the research community that, um, you know, they take care of the animal. They're technicians and they, you know, they, they, they are very highly regulated. And um, yes, there's some testing that is not pleasant, but the animals are treated very humanely as, as possible. They are, there is a group that um, rehomes, you know, everyone, they, they, the animal rights groups try to make you think that all, all they're just killed after they're, you know, used, used up. Um, not true. There is a group within the research community that rehomes these animals um, when they're able to be rehomed um, mm -hmm. and, you know, adopted out to, to live out their, you know, their life as, as uh, a dog. They are, um, yeah, treated very, very humanely. And, and these, any, the instances that these groups use, like for quote unquote puppy mill, and I'll, I'll talk about that particular term in, in a minute, but um, a lot of the pictures and the video that they show you mm -hmm. isn't from in this country. A lot of it is actually footage from other countries um, and and then staged pictures. Um, we've got evidence of, of that in a lot of these cases. Um, but, again, this, this whole notion that animals, animals are, should be equal and we should treat well the, them Well, the last time I equally, checked, Jesus Christ did not die for the sins of animals. I'm just saying. Exactly. Right, yeah, he, he, exactly did, he did not die for the atone for the lives of animals. So he hasn't... Right. You know, I don't know where they get that, that animals and humans are equal. Right, right. And he did, he did not die for, the, for which, which is for kind of proof that they don't have a soul, right? If he mm -hmm. didn't die for, That's true. for, for them. They, 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 they were not created were in his effort. image. They were not created. Right, exactly. And, and so the whole, <laughs> but I have to, I always tell people, I don't care whether you're a Christian or whether you're an atheist believing in evolution at the at the top of both of those scenarios is man mm -hmm. even if you don't if you just believe in creation and evolution or you know in evolution not creationism um you know it's the survival of the fittest so some right? of these so, i mean it just doesn't make sense in any really world view with regard to <laughs> so i'm, I'm to trying to figure out the end game so i'm gonna walk down the street so i guess we need to clothe animals too because we don't want them to be naked I suppose, or right. whatever. I'm not sure. <laughs> so are we supposed to just coexist? I mean, these animal rights groups coexist with animals. Animals have the same rights as humans. We can't own them. So I guess they're going to start buying houses. And I mean, I'm just, is this their mindset? Is is this really? Yeah. I know people look at me going, oh, yeah, Pastor Jay, that's just crazy. But is it that deep? It is. It is. And there's kind of, I want to tell, I would tell people there's sort of two heads of the animal rights beast. You have two ideologies that lead to the same conclusion. So the first one is the groups like Humane Society of the United States, ASPCA. Those are, those are big, huge international conglomerates, hundreds of millions of dollars with staff of 50 attorneys on, on staff. Um, less than 1% of their money actually goes to animals. The rest of it goes to pushing legislation that takes away our rights. But that, I didn't that know that. Are you serious? The, oh, yeah. I'm very serious. I mean, the Humane Society? Serious. People give so much money to the Humane Society. HSUS, yeah, the Humane Society of the United States. Now, again, they have nothing to do. Again, here's where they deceive you. You think that your money, when you give it to HSUS, is somehow going to your local Humane Society. Mm -hmm. There is no connection. At all huh. between those groups. Same with ASPCA. It has nothing to do. They are not an overarching group to all local SPCAs. But they convince everybody by um, by omission more than anything else that that they are that their money somehow going to help the animals in their community, and, and it's not. And it's all. mostly and for in legislation. Most cases, the money is going to legislation and, and attorney fees, right? Oh. All right. Well, so, we got to take a break, Chris. We're going to come back, and then we're going to get our final thoughts. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. You are listening to Stay With Us.
Okay, we have three to four minutes. It goes by pretty fast. I'm going to have you back on. It does. Yeah, I'm going to have you back on another time. And we'll we'll focus on this because this is crazy. I really want to okay, get I'll into. Okay, finish this spot. Okay. Yeah, we'll finish. Spot. Yeah, we'll finish this, on. and then what we'll do is down the road we'll bring you back, and we'll start looking at maybe some of this legislation and maybe what's happening here okay. and what some of the big pushes, and then give people information on what they can do. So we'll do that at another okay. time. But, um, or maybe there's something we can do now. I mean, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. We'll do final yep. thoughts, and I'll, yep. I'll give you the time. I just need to give a shout-out to my sponsor when we come back, okay? I want to give a thank you and a shout-out to C. Verrier, the FloridaMortgageCenter.com. Thank you for sponsoring today with Pastor Jay, and also want to give a shout-out to Church on the Rock. Thank you for being a sponsor of today. Woo! Chris, this is this is ooh, this is a lot. We've got a final three to four minutes, and what would you like the listeners to know right now? What's the important right now? Because I'm still blown away over the Humane Society and all these other organizations spending their money in legislation. You, you don't even think about that. You yeah. think it's all about the dogs and the cats, no. and yeah, no one knows that. Yeah, and I guess that's my final thought: is people need to. Do a little bit of research. Um, use some discernment. If you hear something that's just in your gut, you think, mm, you know, uh, dig into a little bit more. Don't just take it at face value. Don't just give in to the emotion. As Christians, um, again, these groups use our, our inherent love of animals against us, mm-hmm. and, and we fall for it. And if you find yourself hating a human because you heard a story about, a dog getting hit by a car or, or somebody alleged to have, you know, done something to an animal and you find yourself hating the human for it, take a step back, especially as a Christian and just say, you know, how, how do I need how, God? How do I need to look at this? How, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that I'm not advocating for the abuse of animals at all. I love animals. Like I said, I love my dogs. Um, mm-hmm. And, but they're dogs. And, I'm not going to put their worth above any human, whether it's a stranger or family member or anything, because that's not what we're called to do as Christians. And so I think it's an area where we can get ourselves really sort of wrapped around the axles um, and going down a, 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 a dark path of just falling into their ideology of hate. Because the ideology of animal rights really is human. They hate humans. They really do not value human life. And that so is, we need to be careful to my mind. not to go down that yeah, not to go down that path with them, it, right? We can love animals and love humans at the same time. We but can they're value not equal. Animals as, yeah. Right. We can value animals for what and who they are and what they provide in our life and respect them. I always say animal rights is usually disrespectful to the animal mm-hmm. because we put human emotions on them. We put human expectations on them. They can never meet. That's really disrespectful to that animal and to how God created that animal, right? So... I, I try to get people to just really take a look at this from a totally different perspective than getting sucked in by the emotion allows them to do, if that makes sense. No, it makes complete sense because, you know, when you look at some of the laws um, against animals, the cruelty laws and then the ones against child abuse, I said that before, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Some of these laws are extremely strict right. when it comes to animals, but yet they'll take a yeah. child and put them back in a home, you know, Right. The parent exactly. or whoever it was with exactly. the, the abuser was getting no time. I mean, it's just, I've never, yeah. it, it blows my mind. It really, truly blows my mind. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, it so much. It is incrementalism. It is incrementalism for mm. sure. So we just need to be watchful of that. So. Well, thank you so well, very thank you much. So much for having I'm going to have you back and we're going to get in because I want to look, find out what's going on here in Florida see what's happening here and you okay. know and what's happening in other parts of the in the nation and the world because if it starts one place it'll start spreading like a cancer all over especially if you allow it right. and if you have Absolutely. your head in the sand and you are not aware well thank you so very much chris yeah. and thank you guys for listening you know i say the trouble with people is not that they don't know but that they know so much that ain't so get in it find out what's going on you know yesterday's gone tomorrow's not promised What are you going to do today? Today, you're going to do some research. You're going to find out, and you're going to be in the know. Happy New Year. God bless you, and thank you. Have a great day. Chris, I appreciate it. 
I appreciate Oh, sure. Oh, I didn't even want to get into the all dogs go to heaven thing because I know it's just going to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, exactly. people. I mean, they. It, when you, it's funny you kept saying emotion because people get so caught up in the emotion of their animals, and yes. it's like, ooh, yep. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Something. And else. that's all you really got. I mean, the thing about it is, is again, they kind of take advantage of that, right? Because mm-hmm. it's really the only thing you have with that animal is emotion, because they can't talk back to you. They can't, you know. Oh you no! Just, don't say that to some get, of these animal lovers. Yeah. Oh, they talking. <laughs> This anthrop- the anthropomorphism, right, of, of assigning human characteristics to humans, Absolutely. you know, they have encouraged that. Absolutely. Right? Assigning human so. characteristics. That's something else. Thank you so very much. This has been enlightening yeah. to me, and thank you for those articles. Hey, guys, if you're still listening, I'll um, post okay. them, and I'll share them on my page, and you guys can read them for yourself and tell me what you think. All right, Chris, until next time, God bless yeah. you. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, Pastor Jake. Thanks. Happy New Year. Happy